sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? We're going to wait another couple of minutes and then we're going to get started. Take a little time, a little time, so much. Better read between the lines, in case I need what I want. Mountain down the sky. It's like a world on my shoulder. Rock of testing one, two, three. Okay. 
Okay, you like that? Please ask everyone to see them. If I can have everyone's attention, please. It is July 18th, 2021. 2022. <laughs> and I'd like to call the finance meeting to order. Madam Clerk, could you please take a roll? Councilman Marino? Present. Councilman Donegan? Present. Councilman Kikapiano? Present. Councilman Riley? Present. Councilman Renzoli? Present. Councilman Vice Ferry? President Cup Present. President. Like to have a, entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes from the last meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Madam Clerk, please take a vote. Cosmo Marino? Yes. Cosmo Downigan? Yes. Cosmo Campipiano? Yes. Cosmo Riley? Yes. Cosmo Romanzuli? Yes. Cosmo Vice President Ferry? Yes. Cosmo President Kaposkis? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Council Vice President Robert Ferry, and I am the Chair of the Finance Committee. There are five other members of the Finance Committee here tonight. They are Council Member Golden Zoom, Vice Chair, Jessica Marino, Councilman John Donegan, Councilman Richard Campopiano, Council President Chris Poplaskis, and Councilman Matt Riley. There are also two other members of the Council present that are not assigned to the Finance Committee. They are Councilwoman Lamas Vargas, and Councilwoman and Mr. Ming. I would like to thank everyone here for attending this meeting tonight. I know that it is important to you. And I assure you that everyone that wants to be here tonight will have a chance to be heard. We have first on the agenda two items that are new matters before the Council, the Finance Committee. First is Order 62201, ratifying the school committee's collective bargaining agreement with the Cranston Teachers Alliance, Local 1704, AFT Paraprofessionals. And the second item is Order 62202, ratifying the school committee's collective bargaining agreement with the Cranston Teachers Alliance, Local 1704, Teachers Unit. Before I open public hearings, I would first like to call on the CFO Joe Balducci or Superintendent Janine Nodamassi to come up to the podium and explain to us a little bit about the contracts. Mr. Balducci, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. I'm Joseph Balducci, Chief Financial Officer, Cranston Public Schools. I'm gonna be uh, talking about the teacher contract first. So if everyone um, can go to that fiscal note that I um, prepared. So let's start with um, salary increases. So for the 22-23 fiscal year, the year we're in, we negotiated um, roughly a, a $2 million salary increase. <coughs> Should I wait? Good. Okay. Okay, so in, in the current year, um, 22, 23, a salary increase of approximately uh, $2.1 million. And if you look at one of my footnotes below, you'll see that um, how we spread that money out was to give steps one to 11 a 0.5% contractual raise, and those on the top step, a 3% raise. I'm then gonna to go to the next line item, um, restructuring of step differentials. So Cranston Public Schools, like most districts, um, has um, 10, 11, 12 steps that their employees go through. So each of those step movements equates to a, a, a raise in salary. So what we did was, and they were approximately six and a half percent differential between steps. So we re restructured those step movements to get them to around 6.1%. It, 
in doing that, it allowed us to give those on the top step um, a bigger raise because without um, achieving a contractual raise, those on the top step don't get anything. Those moving through steps by default will get an increase in pay, thus a step increase. So that's how we were, I'll say creative in trying to both stay within budget and also um, come up with a fair contract. Um, one of the other things, this contract is no different than the other ones. We uh, call it a ratification bonus. So like all the other uh, groups that came before us and ultimately approved by city council, we gave uh, each member of, of this group a $2,000 ratification bonus that is being funded through ESSER 3 grant dollars, similar to how all the other ratification bonuses were funded. Longevity. So this contract um, has longevity built into it and has had longevity built into it for the last 20 some odd years that I've been associated with Cranston schools. The way longevity uh, works for Cranston teachers is beginning in year 20, they receive a, um, a longevity payment. Um, then uh, from 20 to 25, that annual uh, dollar amount doesn't change. Once they get to 25 years of service, it increases, and then basically it doesn't change until you get to year 30, and then it increases one more time. So if again, if you look at my footnote um, under C, longevity increments. So basically we um, increased each of the three buckets by $750. The line item below that, it, calls the, it refers to the elimination of professional de development um, stipend. So how we funded the increase in the longevity is um, in the prior contract, we require eight hours of professional development um, to be achieved by each uh, minimum of eight hours by each teacher. Under the old way, it, those hours are, um, were spent outside of the normal day. So we had to pay for those uh, within the, the operating budget. On a go forward basis, basically we are assigning two days out of the existing school calendar that are gonna be referred to as PD dates. So basically what I was able to do was just shift those, those dollars, approximately 301,000, move it from the uh, PD area of the budget and use it to fund the increase in the longevity. So I'll say it's budget neutral. And the last two items, just Medicare tax and certified pension. So again, anytime there's an increase in salary, there's Medicaid, impact on Medicaid taxes and um, pension impact as well. So that's year one. Year two, again, just from a um, salary increase, you will see that it's a across the board, steps one to 12 will receive a 1% increase. And you will see the uh, words wage reopener. Um, so again, that doesn't tie neither, neither the district nor the um, union's hands. It's basically just to, you know, hopefully things are better, but if they're not, then basically we, we stick under the existing contract. And then in year three, um, basically it's a 1.5% increase across the board. Before I move on to the next um, bargaining group, are there any questions that I can answer for you on this? At this time, if any council members have a question for Mr. Balducci, you can please ask him now. Councilwoman Manzulli. Thank you. Mr. Balducci, could you tell me um, how much money is left in the SR3 funds? I'm sorry, is left in what fund? SR3, after using it to do the ratification bonus. Um, I apologize, I don't have that figure off the top of my head. I will tell you that district is um, $20.8 million, of which um, the ratification bonus has been incorporated into the budget. We are beginning to spend ESSER three uh, grant dollars, but to tell you this evening how much is left, I won't be able to. Okay, excellent. Could I perhaps get that information from you at, at a later date? Sure, by all means. Okay, thank you. And I, I want to say that I do think that that's a great use of that money and the teachers certainly deserve it. I'm also wondering, since you mentioned the wage reopener, can you clarify for me if that opening it can only increase the percentage, correct? That is correct. Okay, so currently everything here, year one, two, and three should fit in the budget if perhaps the schools are level funded going forward. 
That is correct. That is correct. Excellent. At all times, we have to live within our budget. Excellent. So, I mean, that is the goal. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councilman Donegan. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Baltucci, thank you for being here this evening. You're welcome. Um, I know that we had previously met and discussed um, the fiscal impact of the contract, but just for the public, um, there on the fiscal impact note, there's this roughly $6 million figure that, that that's there. There's also a closer to $16 million figure that's there. Could you just take us and the public through that? That way there's um, clarity on what sure. the um, mm -hmm. impact is in totality. Um, yes, by all means. Um, so over the last probably 10 years or so, it's been my practice to create a fiscal impact statement, um, not only representing a budget over budget year, but also a, a cash, as I refer, cash out the door um, method. Um, because sometimes some people will look through a lens and just say, well, okay, how much is it going to cost us from a cash standpoint versus the world I live in? Uh, how much is it going to cost me in budget year one, two, and three? So basically that last line is just strictly a cash um, computation. Um, but again, from where I sit um, each year, I look at it individually. So in 2022, 23 is a standalone amount, 23, 24, and then 24, 25. So hopefully that answers your question. It does, thank you. You're welcome. Does any other council person have any questions for Mr. Balducci? Councilwoman Jermaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Malbucci, thank you for being here. My question, uh, based on uh, press release, the mayor sent out, he recommend that the council uh, okay. return this uh, ordinance to you to look at it again. What this mean to you as the chief financial officer to have you come back with this ordinance to go back to what we look at it. So how I'll respond to that. Um, the district um, negotiated with the teachers union and the paraprofessionals and the bus aides and the technical assistance, behavioral techs uh, in good faith uh, over several months. Um, during that process, I mean, we started off as being miles apart to, and ultimately got to where we are today. Um, for my position, I think this is a fiscally responsible um, contract. Um, I think we structured it in a way, number one, that was both fair to the district, fair to the students, fair to our employees. Um, but at the end of the day, ultimately, it's, uh, it's our responsibility to make sure we live within uh, the constraints of this negotiations. And the reason, and so the example I'm going to give you is in year two. So we know the financial situation the city is in currently. So knowing that in 23 and 23, 24, you'll see a 1% increase. Um, it, it, it could have been more. Um, we were asked to give more. But I think what we did was, again, we knew that we had to live within our budget um, and also move this contract forward. So that's the reason why you only see a 1% increase in the second year of the contract. In the third year of the contract, we're hoping that um, things turn around. And if they don't, I think at the end of the day, a point and a half, a 1.5% increase, I think is fair. Um, everyone, you know, in this building, and we all personally know the, what inflation is costing us. So I think this does even keep pace with inflation. Um, but I, so I think it, that's how we approached it uh, during the process. Thank you, Mr. Baruchi. You're welcome. Councilwoman Marino. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Balducci. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for the submission of the fiscal impact statement, including the footnotes, which was very useful. Um, I, I just want to uh, reiterate the point that I, that I know that's come up um, quite a bit from constituents, and I think it's very pertinent to hear from you directly, is that within the school department, you know, we as council members and you as the director of the school uh, department's finances knows that your budget is separate and apart from the city's budget in terms of the money that is appropriated to you from the city, correct? Correct. Yep. And uh, these numbers that you have uh, provided with the three-year contract is something that you stand by as the school department being able to afford financially, correct? Correct. Okay. And that would, 
And that would also mean even if the school department was level funded for those three years, you feel that the school department can still afford the, these increases, correct? Correct. Okay. And the other thing, oh, the other um, item I think is that's worth addressing is the proper use of the ratification uh, bonus. Um, that is, to your point, a purpose for the ESSER funds. And I know that um, some of us, you know, being involved know this, but maybe the general public might not. Employee retention, even within the school department, is a significant concern, correct? Has been. Yes, it has been. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Council President Papalaskis. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Council President, one second. Um, someone texted me that there's a problem with the video on Zoom. Um, that there's music in the background. I'm just bringing this to the technician's attention. So everyone on, on stage here, please shut your microphone off when you're not speaking. Thank you. And council chambers, we have to press the button to talk all the time. We're not used to the microphone being on all the time, so... This is a little bit of a learning curve for us also. Okay, Council President, I'm sorry I interrupted listen, you. Listen, I can't wait to go check YouTube later and listen to the music and <laughs> see if you're really set in the mood, uh, Chairman Ferry, <laughs> for the evening. Uh, a real quick question. A lot of my colleagues asked the questions that I had written down. Um, Mr. Balducci, you know, we mentioned the ESSER funds, and you're going to get us a number on what's left over on that. If you do have a lot left over, could you use ESSER funds in years two and three to help with this contract if needed, or are there certain guidelines with that? No, I mean, we can use the funds throughout the life of the, of the funding. Um, we've already submitted a budget, a application and so forth. Um, but I know we as a district are, are gonna be given an opportunity as things change in the second or the third year of the use of those funds. Um, so there's always a possibility. Um, However, again, we don't rely on, we don't do not want to rely on one time revenue sources to use in our operating budget. So th that becomes difficult because two to three years out, there's going to be a fis fiscal cliff that we need to worry about. So we don't want to do that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councilman Riley. Thank you, Chairman Ferry. Mr. Balducci, is the reopener clause, is that only subject to um, whether or not the budget is level funded by the city next year? Or do, would that possibly include any operational efficiencies that you find where you can lower costs in the administration to give more to the teachers? Or is it strictly based on what the city gives you? It's probably both. Um, so if we find efficiencies within our budget that we're able to shift um, to a wage, a potential wage increase, that is a possibility. Yes, you're welcome. Councilwoman Vargas. Good evening, Mr. Balducci. Good evening. Um, quick question for you. The ratification bonus as well, I understand that's obviously from the ESSER funds that you explained to all of us this evening. Um, the $2,000 employee bonus, um, even though it's grant, I'm just wondering if a teacher happens to get hired in January, will that teacher also, or educator or staff, receive that that $2,000 ratification bonus, or do they have to start in September in order to be eligible for that? I'm just wondering what your policy is on that. We don't have a policy, but my quick answer to that was probably it's going to be prorated. Um, is is the, my quick answer to, um, to how we're going to answer that. Oh, I may stand corrected. No, uh, so they had to be, yep. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike, Michael Crudale, um, Chief Human Resources Officer, Grants of Public Schools. So the, the ratification bonus, they had to be employed through the end of last school year and they have to be employed in September, uh, well, August when we start school. Uh, so they won't, anyone that is hired after that, again, it's, it's part of the whole negotiation process that, that we ratify the contract with those employees who were part of the bargaining unit at that time. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Balducci at this time? 
Mr. Balducci, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Um, again, if, if I could just go over the um, teacher assistance very quickly. Very good. Okay. So again, um, the fiscal impact is for a three year, covers a three year period. Um, in year one of the contract, again, if you look at the footnotes, it's a dollar 25 across the board increase. Um, again, day two are, are scheduled to receive a ratification bonus. Um, they have never, this group has never had longevity. So we did introduce longevity within uh, this contract over the next three years. And that's footnoted uh, at the bottom as well. And again, the impacts um, on the payroll taxes, Medicare um, and uh, pension as well. And then in year two, it's a, I'm sorry, a 75 cent raise. And then in year three, a 75 cent days with a potential wage reopener in year three as well. So I'll answer any questions um, on this contract. Do any council members have any questions for Mr. Balducci on the other contract? I don't see any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next, I would like to open public hearings on the contracts. And first I would ask, I'd like to ask Superintendent um, Janine to come up to the podium. Thank you very much. I thought you rescinded my invitation. <laughs> Good evening, Council President Poplowskis, Chairman Ferry, members of the Finance Committee and City Council. I come before you this evening, not merely as the proud Superintendent of Cranston Public Schools, but as a fellow taxpayer, and most importantly, a parent and a customer of Cranston Public Schools. Over the last year, the Cranston School Committee, along with my administration, has worked diligently and purposefully to negotiate labor contracts for all six of our bargaining units that are fair to both the taxpayers of the city of Cranston, as well as our school department employees. The two before you this evening for consideration those being the agreements with the Cranston Teachers Alliance Local 1704 certified and paraprofessional units have been cast in the same mold. They both contain modest wage increases for these groups, and we have updated a great deal of contractual language that provides the district with greater flexibility. For example, we have designed a new middle school schedule that allows for students to have more support and longer class periods in their core subjects. We have embedded professional development into our school days. We have designed and implemented summer school programs to address the gaps in learning and assist students transitioning to different levels. Our focus continues to be on students graduating with skills and experiences, including career pathways that can contribute to their success. We have a robust plan to address attendance and community engagement going forward among many other initiatives. The discussions that led to the sealing of these two agreements between the CTA and the school committee were forthright, honest and transparent at every turn. The fact that they have now become a source of controversy is to me, a controversy in and of itself. I could stand here before you tonight and chronicle all of the hardships our students, teachers, and paraprofessionals have endured over the last two and a half years as a result of the pandemic, but I'm sure you have heard many of them. The effects of which we as educators will continue to deal with in the classroom for years and years to come. Cranston historically has a reputation for excellence in our schools. However, we cannot rest on that and we must remain competitive. Like other businesses, we must invest, compete, and keep our excellent staff members. Our culture of respect and support for our students and our staff, our excellent high school programs, our improved facilities, and the fair wages we pay our staff are all examples of what makes us a district that draws families to Cranston and teachers and paraprofessionals to our schools. We need these contracts to be fully supported. 
Moreover, I could also remind you that Cranston led the way in returning to in-person schooling and were amongst the first districts to report uh, to return to full-time in-person education for every student. All of these recovery efforts would not have been possible without the exemplary work of these two groups of people, many of whom, and many, many of whom, I think all of whom, are sitting here this evening. They have tirelessly striven over the last year to put our students back on track and to ensure that dis this district maintains a level of high academic excellence that our taxpayers and our customers not only demand and expect, but serve as an inducement for more families to move into the city of Cranston. I know each of you has an investment in our schools in some way. Your parents, employees or relatives of employees or even alumni of our schools. I see you at school events, taking pictures with staff and students of all the good things that we do and sharing that information with your constituents. Certainly, I know you share my pride and you are aware of the excellent reputation and the product of our schools that we offer to taxpayers. I am sure you desire to fully support and continue that excellence. We negotiated these contracts knowing well the city's fiscal austerity plan for the 2023-24 school year. And we are still able to stand by our agreements with these bargaining units. Our schools are one of the most important gears in the economic machine of our city. But that machine needs to be maintained and at the same time, our employees need to be treated fairly. That is why I have come before you this evening to implore you to consider these two very fair and responsible collective bargaining agreements for full ratification. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say anything else? <laughs> I would, but um, we'll move on. Yes. Okay. Next, I would like to ask the council members here if you have any questions for the superintendent. Councilwoman Manzulli. Thank you. Thank you, superintendent, for being here tonight and for being everywhere all the time. You're at all the school events. Um, you're always available to answer questions either by email or phone, and I sincerely appreciate that. My only question um, that I forgot to ask Mr. Balducci, so perhaps you could answer it for me. Going forward in years two and three, Mr. Balducci confirmed that these raises are budgeted for, not dependent on an increase in dollars from the city. Can you also tell me that it's not dependent on cutting any programs such as middle school sports or anything else for our students? Yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Vargas. Uh, Superintendent, thank you um, for coming before us this evening. Um, I it's it's. Uh, not really a, a question, but I do want to say um, thank you to uh, you and all the educators um, who have come together this evening. Um, I am a mother of a young woman who just graduated from Cranston East and a mother of a soon to be sixth grader Parkview. So I do stand by you in terms of excellence and I do support um, all of the educators and everything that each and every one of you have actually done, uh, particularly after uh, post COVID. Um, so I'll be the first one to say right before all you that, well, I'm not on the finance committee if this does pass tonight, I do wholeheartedly support the school committee's collective bargain agreement with the Cranston Teachers Alliance Local 1704. <laughs>
Councilwoman Jermaine. Thank you, Chairman. Superintendent, hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I remember the first time I met you, I came here in this auditorium and asked you about lunch. And since then, I learned to know you. And I'm watching your job, what you're doing for our students. I'm speaking as a mom, three boys in the Princeton um, school, Waterman, Parkview. And I cannot test the job, the immense job our teacher are doing for our student. My sons wake up every morning with happy face. I don't have to ask them anything. I have to tell them anything. Wait till high school. That'll change. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope it won't change, but they are so happy to go to school. And that's, that's what every mom wants. Mm -hmm. And the teacher they have give them this happiness to wake up to come to school and we want that continue to all school in Queenstown. So this evening as I am not in the school uh, finance committee, not anymore, but I am 100% support those two ordinances. And I ask my colleagues, please, let's do this for our student. Let's do this for our teachers. There is a culture where anytime we have some trouble, in the budget, we have one place to go is the school. And I think this is need to stop. Who gave us the great police officer? Who teach our great doctor, physician, engineering, who teach them? We all went to school to become a, a professional. And for too long, our system keep our teachers, our education for leftover. Time is over for leftover. I believe. Councilwoman Germain. Yes. This time is allocated to ask the superintendent Question. questions. We will have plenty of time later. Thank you. All right. But what I, I said. No, <laughs> Chairman. Chairman. Yes. Chairman. Chairman. We need to stick I'm to the agenda. I'm listening to the solicitor. We, have to keep her. we okay. need to stick to the agenda. Okay. I agree with you. The agenda is a contract. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So to say that is because I am on support in this contract, and that's why I'm, I'm taking too much time. But thank you, uh, Superintendent. We are with you, teachers. We are with you. We're gonna get Chairman, please. Thank, thank you. Does anyone else on the council have any questions for the superintendent at this time? about the contract. Councilwoman Marino. Thank you. Um, I have my, whether you want a, a rhetorical question uh, with respect to the contract, um, because as a member of the finance committee and as a member of this council, as a parent of two boys in the Cranston Public Schools, um, I will say my piece. And um, my piece this evening is a great deal of gratitude to the superintendent, to your tight ship of directors, to the teachers, 
to the paraprofessionals, the whole team. If there is a department that does more with less, it is this department. I This contract, I feel, is modest. This contract, as negotiated, I feel was done diligently. Uh, this contract, I feel, uh, is something that should be applauded and admired, uh, particularly, particularly for the fact that uh, the school budget, your department, has run a ship that has not run in a deficit. Um, your uh, finance director has done an A plus job and the whole team, again, it's everyone together uh, making it work. And um, I, when you had mentioned controversy, I couldn't agree with you more. I don't understand why there needs to be controversy with this contract. Um, and I will fully support this contract and I do not need convincing, but thank you. Thank you. You think it's easy running this meeting. <laughs> Councilman Riley. Thank you, Chairman. So I guess I will, I'll speak to the superintendent as well about my piece for tonight. I am on the finance committee in the city council. I've reviewed the contract and I, I agree. I don't know where, why this controversy or, or what, why we had to even go down that road. Looking comparatively at other contracts that we've, we've served, on the other bargaining units, this, like um, Councilwoman Marino said, is modest. I think it's fair to the teachers. Uh, in fact, I think the teachers deserve more in terms of support. In, in terms of support in the classroom, I, I am in full support of anything that goes to teachers, kids, or classrooms. Thank okay, you, please no shouting. Yes. Um, I will be supporting this contract. I do have concerns about reopeners in future years, but that's something that you, the school committee, the council, we can all work out at that time. Like we always do, we sit down and we always come to an agreement and we always make it through. Thank you. Now, as for, for kids in classrooms, I, I said there needs to be more. I've heard year after year that there's a surplus every year. And where does that surplus go? It doesn't go to the classrooms. No, it doesn't go to the Kleenex boxes or the cleaning of the classrooms. That's where you, you guys come out of pocket for. And I think that's a travesty. I think it's a travesty that the parents come out of pocket for that when they're supposed surpluses. And the city is not your enemy. We are here together. It's the teachers and the city together. It's, we are not the ones that are taking anything away. We need to look everywhere to see where this money is going and why it's not going to kids in classrooms. But as far as this contract concerns, I, I think it's perfectly fine. I think you guys deserve that ratification bonus more than anybody. What you guys have done through the pandemic, through I've seen through my own two children who handled the pandemic differently. One didn't, didn't talk, touch her at all. The other one, she, she really struggled with it at home. And you guys have helped them both come back to it. I really hope that we do a deep dive into this learning loss and get all kids back on track. But I thank you so much for your service and I'm honored to support you tonight. And just, and just lastly, one last thing, shame on anybody who's trying to politicize any of this. This is for our kids and that's that. So I don't wanna hear. I support you 100%. I support our kids and we continue and we will continue to do so. Okay. Councilman Campo Piano, do you have any questions for the superintendent? I, I don't have a question, but I just want to say I echo my colleagues' sentiments and I agree with them wholly. Thank you. And council president. I'll ask a question and then I'm gonna say something. When's the first day of school? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Apparently not soon enough. Yeah, um, I'll be brief because my colleagues have asked numerous questions and you know, 
I agree with a lot of the sentiment that they have. You know, I've sat on this council for the last eight years. I've always supported the teacher contracts that have come in front of me. I plan on doing the same this evening. Um, I look forward to voting in favor of it. Um, obviously, your financial house is in order. I heard tonight that you can afford it over the next three years. So that's music to my ears. I certainly want to thank all the teachers, staff, um, up and down the chain for all the work that you do. Um, looking forward to freshman year. My son's going to Cranston West next year. And um, thank you for all you do. So I'll be in support. Thank you. We welcome all new customers. I'm going to give Councilman Donegan and Councilwoman Renzulli another minute each if they would like it. To be fair, to ask any questions to the superintendent. Um, all right. I, I, well, I guess I will ask a question then. Um, superintendent, how have the past several years impacted teacher retention? And what do you think that this contract before us will do to improve uh, retention year over year? The past two years, I've seen more teachers leave. Um, more younger teachers leave for competitive districts. I had not seen that. Um, I've been in this business 28 plus years. And um, these past two years have been very challenging. We, are we tried to compete with our neighboring districts. It is extremely difficult. Um, before we negotiated this contract, we were about 20th out of 34 school districts with our salary. That does not make us competitive. Our charming good looks only get us so far. <laughs> so after this contract is hopefully ratified, it brings us up not very much to maybe the top half of the districts, um, because again, they are negotiating as well. But to keep our staff, it has become increasingly difficult. We need to make sure that we are taking care of our staff. So we have offered, again, um, a modest increase in salary as well as the ratification bonuses as incentives. But overall, it is very difficult to keep um, new people to this career, unlike anything I've seen in the past, uh, again, almost 30 years in education. I don't have all the answers as to why that is, but I do know that when people leave and we ask them, many times um, they just find it too challenging. It is an extremely difficult job. Um, and they are leveraging districts against each other. And that's very difficult. So again, um, we have a great reputation in this state and I'm very proud of that, but that only gets us so far. So we need to put our money where our mouth is. Thank you. Um... I, I don't have any kids in the system um, yet, but one of the reasons why uh, my wife and I chose Cranston is because of our public schools. And we wanted to be in a community that has a, a quality edu public education system, which Cranston has. And you don't have that without dedicated administrators, and you certainly don't have that without dedicated educators. And we've seen that perhaps more so than ever the past several years. Um, so it's imperative that we support and put our money where our mouth is that when we say we support our educators, we support them in the purse, um, go going, you know, I, t I tend to talk about housing a lot, but you look at the teacher's contract. Step 11 is for a bachelor's degree teacher, about $80,000. In the city of Cranston, to, come, to afford a single-family home, you need a household income of $80,000. So steps mm -hmm. one through 10 in this city for teachers at a bachelor's level, you couldn't even afford to buy a home. Teachers deserve a living wage. Everyone deserves a living wage. Um, I, I just completed my first year as a teacher in the private, in a private school. Um, but my wife is a public school teacher. My mother is a member of the CTA and my father is a retired um, teacher. And 
my dad was on his board and he instilled in me and, and my brother and, and the rest of us uh, a sense of solidarity that um, to stand in solidarity with working people and unions when they're negotiating for good pay, for good benefits and for healthcare and for good working conditions. And that's what you all have done and you deserve that. Our teachers deserve every cent that this contract gives them and more. And I implore everyone to support this this evening. Councilman Renzo, we have one minute. Okay, thank you. I'm going to talk fast. Uh, Superintendent, I did think of a question. Do are is there any structure for any type of sign-on bonus to bring teachers into the city of Cranston to fill open positions? At this time, we don't have an individual sign-on bonus. What we do is we look at um, if the person has worked in other districts, we match their step. Um, I wish we had that problem, to be honest with you. It is very difficult for us to um, get teachers in certain areas, especially um, math, world language, um, and recently technology. Because again, um, if you have those degrees, you can get a very high paying job in the private sector. So um, at this time, we do not have that. We, um, we did consider it. And, and I'm not trying to pander to the crowd here, but we want to take care of the people who have stood with us for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. So that's not to say that won't come at some point, um, but right now we're trying to take care of the people who've kind of walked the walk with us over the past several decades for okay. some of us. Definitely understandable. Yeah. Um, my second question to play off that is with a, lack of of teachers filling positions um if we don't have what is happening with the classroom sizes mm -hmm. and are teachers needing to be compensated over a cap of students or do we not i know when we don't have a pool of substitutes and yep. people are out and you add your teachers are getting paid hourly mm -hmm. from the top step how does that affect your overall budget and do we anticipate that that might cause a problem at some point in time we look at trends um, especially in line items such as coverage and overage, which are two separate um, UCOA classes with us. But um, yes, that does happen with um, if a teacher is out or we've recently had a phenomenon of people um, resigning mid-year, which is not, it's very difficult for us to support our students. So oftentimes teachers pick up extra classes or extra students, it depends on the level, how that works out. But there are some teachers who have picked up extra classes and work the entire day without a break to make sure our students have certified qualified people in front of them, because it is hard for us to just quickly grab someone, um, let's say mid-year um, for a different subject. So yes, we, we do budget for that, we account for that. Mr. Balducci, <clears throat> we look at those line, um, those those you co-align items on a monthly basis to make sure you know we might be for example the sub pool okay there are none when i graduated college i won't tell you the year but there were um, i was an english teacher and um, there were hundreds of us so we subbed for many years we earned a spot you got a job you were thrilled now if we have a talented student teacher we offer them a job before they even cross the stage at their college. So the sub pool is basically non-existent. So what we've done is really shift our money that would have gone to substitutes into the coverage overage um, pots, because that's where we have certified people who are able to support and service our children. Excellent, thank you. Um, as some of you may know, I, I do have three children who are in Cranston Public Schools, but I'm also a, a track and cross country coach. So I feel like I have maybe 400 other kids who are my second kids. So I know how important the job that you all do is because they all talk to me about you and how important you are in their lives. So I just wanted to point out, I never needed anyone to urge me to vote for or against this contract because education to me is 
not a political topic. You all deserve the, the increases. You deserve support in the classroom um, and asking questions does not take away from that. So I wanna let you know that I will be supporting this contract tonight. Thank you. Okay, uh, sometimes you have to go last to be first. Um, there's probably about 400 of you here tonight, and I think I spoke to most of you on the phone, so you really know how I feel and where I stand. And if you haven't spoken to me, my number is 215-8367. Give me a call. I'm not going to get into any details. I support the contract. You guys know that. All right, now we have some people that were really looking forward to speaking tonight. And I am not gonna deny, like I said at the beginning of the meeting, that if anybody wants to speak tonight, they will get to speak. So um, I had a list here and the first person on the list was Dan Wall. Dan, would you like to come up and speak? We're gonna limit testimony to as short as possible. <laughs> How do you speak? The faster we can vote. All right. State my name, Dan Wall, 27 Sagamore Road. I'm the school committee representative from Ward 6. I'm the chairman of the Cranston School Committee, and I'm also a member or was a member of the negotiating committee that negotiated the teacher's contract and the paraprofessional's contract. Um, just off the script, I couldn't be more pleased to hear how, how supportive people are of, of this contract. I couldn't be more pleased. Um, I know a week ago, there was a lot of talk and a lot of social media and even um, press releases that made me doubt if we would get to this moment at this time. Um, and with the people who said that you shouldn't politicize the contracts or education, I'm in full agreement. I'm a teacher in, the, in another district. I know what it means when you're waiting for another contract. It does have an impact on your life when you're living wage. So I'm very happy to hear the members of the finance committee say that they support the contract. Um, so I was gonna say in the strongest terms to urge you, but I don't think I'll need to do that. But having been a member of the, the committee that negotiated, I can tell you, these contracts are absolutely fair. They're fair to the teachers. They're fair to the teachers' assistants. They're fair to those people that you spoke of, the people who took care of our kids through the horrors of the COVID virus and through all the other things that went with it. They're fair to the teachers, the teachers' assistants, but they're also fair to Cranston and the taxpayers, because like the superintendent said, I'm also one of them, all right? These contracts, as I know was said with Mr. Balducci and the superintendent, they were negotiated in good faith. And anybody who sat at a negotiating te team can tell you it's not an easy process. And they're within the constraints of the budget, the budget the administration and the council gave us. In simple terms, we're not coming here asking you for more. It's within our operating budget and your questions bear that out. And thirdly, you know, and certainly uh, this is a point that I thought was important, especially after reading the press release. And I'm sure it concerns everyone on the stage, everyone in this audience. What will be the impact of these contracts on our structural deficit? The answer is simple. These contracts will not in any way, shape or form increase the current structural deficit. And furthermore, not voting for these contracts, and I think you all know that now, um, won't decrease that structural deficit by one penny. So not to belabor the point, and I can tell, and I know a lot of you people, you share my opinion, Vote for these contracts. It's the right thing. These teachers deserve it. These teachers' assistants deserve it. And thank you for the time. Thank you. Next, I would like to call up Liz Larkin. You're on the list. You will get to speak, Mr. Uh, Director. I'm sorry, I was talking to Director Moretti. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, my name is, well, first of all, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to president, to the chair, to all the council members. 
uh, give me an opportunity to speak. Um, I'm never short with uh, not being able to speak. Um, and um, I do want to thank you. My name is Elizabeth Larkin. First and foremost, I am a teacher. I have been teaching 41 years. I've taught grades three through eight. Uh, 36 of those years have been in Cranston. Um, it is my adopted city. I grew up right on the other side of Patuxet Village in Warwick, but I did my entire life in Cranston. Everything was on the Cranston side. So my allegiance and my love for this city is very, very strong. And really, truly, I'm so proud to represent all of you. And thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, these are uh, times in which people are away and the meetings have been changed and the times have been changed. And it has been a full-time job with me getting whiplash, trying to get everything organized. Before I start today, um, I just want to clarify a few things and then I will give you my very long-winded history lesson because really truly I can never speak as a social studies teacher um, without giving a history lesson. But I do feel very thankful that people um, on, on the committee are uh, going to support these contracts. Um, that is not the way it's been in the last couple of weeks. And I just want to say that I feel like sometimes I'm in the twilight zone um, because I really rallied the troops and I got everything out because the threat was real. It was real. You don't send something like this out unless you want to really start a war. You don't, you don't go on the news, which I almost bought the clip. You Mr. don't go- Council, Good chairman, we have to stick to what's on the agenda, please. Not politicize- It the, is on the agenda. Not to politicize the issue with this- No, point. this is on the agenda. This is the agenda. At this time, I'm giving her her four minutes, please. I'll give- And, and mind you, Chair, I did speak to you early, earlier. My vice president, who has worked diligently, is finally on a vacation with his children and wife. And I am going to speak for the two of us. Thank you. Um, it is with an extreme disappointment and outrage that I stand before you tonight. And while it has shifted, I am still angry that we had to go through this. The members of the Cranston Teachers Alliance have an embedded culture to work in partnership with Cranston Public Schools. When the school departments had financial struggles years ago, we sharpened our pencils to balance the budget and keep people employed. When we had a deficit during financial difficult times, I believe that under the last administration, we were the only department that ever had to pay back a deficit to their own city. This payment over five years, finally being forgiven in the last year and being level or underfunded for years, caused the school department to cut many precious programs, the arts, music, sports, school activities, clubs, after school support, and many positions causing high class sizes. And the members of the bargaining unit's wages were slashed. And the Cranston Teachers Alliance went through all of these years with a 0% raise, year upon year, for the benefit of the school department. Over the past few years, we have witnessed very modest raises, as the superintendent stated. The public and the elected officials always make statements about that 85% plus of the budget is the salaries. Well, if it weren't for the administrators, teachers, related service providers, support staff, custodians, administrative assistants, kitchen employees, mechanics and ground crews, bus aides and bus drivers and central administration staff, there would be no Cranston Public Schools what there would be would be brick and mortar and glass. We are human beings and with human issues and concerns, whether they be medical, emotional, mental, 
illness, financial or family related problems to carry on our shoulders. We then support over 11,000 students through all of the issues that they arrive to school with that weigh upon their minds. Then comes, then comes COVID and a global pandemic not experienced for a hundred years. I don't know about anyone else, but I've been through a lot of situations in my life, but working around the clock for two and a half years in partnership with Superintendent Nada Massey and her team to manage closing of schools, distance learning, policies, and reopening with a deadly virus was not one of them. On top of that, we are constantly criticized for the decisions that we make where they either were mandatory or that we together made work and it's been hell and still is. Now comes our contract. The CTA committee worked on three groups and two contracts since October, 2021. Cranston Public Schools leadership worked on their proposals for months and months, and we worked for months and months together. Towards the end of our negotiations, we were made aware of the city side budget deficits. We worked extremely hard to stay within the guidelines of our budget, and we did sacrifice, even in this contract, especially after the intensity of the working conditions over the past three years. It took its toll mentally, physically, and emotionally on all of us. Many employees have retired and many more have resigned and are still doing it up to this week. This is with a superintendent that appreciates them, tries to support them, and who I have access to in order to bring their concerns and fears. 30 seconds, please. True. I, 30 seconds? Please. May I finish my speech, please? I'm asking. Maybe some other people will give me their minutes. Okay. Whoever wants to give up their minutes, I appreciate it. Okay. Truth. Then comes July 7th, when I am sent the press release from Mayor Hopkins sickening, despicable, and a punch in the gut. Truth, that bell will never be unrung. That genie is out of the bottle. Mayor Hopkins, the education mayor, his administration and his political supporters denigrated all of us in the public eye, defamed our good characters and that character of Cranston Public Schools in the public eye. Truth, now there is a lot of backtracking. Where is the press release retraction? He encouraged this committee to send our contracts back. They would not have said that if they didn't know that it might happen. Truth, he was interviewed on the news. Now he says he approves. The mayor does not get to approve our contracts. The school committee and the city council get to approve our contract. Truth, he stated that he only had one concern about the reopener in year two. Did I receive a call? Did we receive a call? No. Truth, instead, they decided to have political antics to the public, to the public audience, statewide and beyond on social media. No one can state that they support the schools and send out a press release like that. No one, truth. If you hear that I don't believe it, I don't. Truth, on June 15th, we signed a tentative agreement worked tirelessly for long days and through the weekend to get ready for two ratification meetings on June 20th. Truth, next day, school committee has their meeting on Tuesday, June 21st. 
all three legs of our stool was in support. The Cranston Public Schools, the Cranston Teachers Alliance, and the Cranston School Committee. But there's something else in these contracts. If not passed, there is lots of important language. Important language for working conditions and teaching and learning improvements for over 11,000 students developed by us after assessing as educators what did or did not work during COVID in order to support the fragile, fill in the learning gaps, and yet still continue to challenge. It has been challenging and stressful. And I, as the union president, who have been called an emotional woman, I am not. I am a passionate leader, and I do not want my members attacked. I take, I take this assault very seriously. I take my role as president very serious. And to some, it may be political posturing. To us, it is our lives, our profession, our employment, our students' education, and that should not be played in the public. And I, we did not do that. Okay? Truth. This situation is real and has been. This has been disruptive. And this press release and the negative tweeting on Twitter, because we all have that, and the comments that are on social media, um, basically it has caused a lot of stress and anxiety. We deserve peace, we deserve respect, and we deserve appreciation. And finally, this came up on my Instagram feed today. It is a Charles Schultz, Charlie Brown statement. The best thing about speaking the truth all the time is you don't have to remember what you said. Please send our contracts to the full council for review. Thank you. Director Moretti. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak in this order. Just want to pass along a, a brief statement. Um, not going to get involved in tit for tat. I think the most important thing is to uh, bring to your attention that uh, over the past week or so, that the mayor has had some very insightful and constructive discussions uh, with the superintendent. And they, we have witnesses, the superintendent, I think, might be able to testify to that. Um, so there was a discussion with the superintendent and, and, the, and the chairman of the school committee uh, that narrowed his concerns about the contract to what was indefinite, that being the openers of years two and three, just to have the concern that the schools will be able to afford those contracts to be able to honor them. So as a result of those fruitful discussions, um, uh, some, good, some good input was gained. But up until this evening, um, uh, the mayor, as you know, has almost unprecedented in recent history, given the schools a, an increase of $1.5 million in funding last year and a million dollars in funding this year, which hadn't been in place for quite a while. And to, to show the mayor's commitment, even though facing some financial challenges. Um, but listening to Mr. Balducci and listening to Mr. Wall and the superintendent, 
given her in their assurances that the schools can afford within their current budget what those contracts as they stand and with reopeners could stand within their own control or financial management uh, going forward for the next two to three years, the mayor can support and recommends support for these ratifications of these two agreements. Okay, everyone. Now we, we still had a few people that chose to speak and I'm gonna still offer them the opportunity. Next would be former mayor and council and school committee citywide, Trafficanti, Michael Trafficanti. Mr. Chairman, um, uh, I, I don't um, like following Liz Larkin. <laughs> but, but Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I, I, uh, I'm speaking to you as a former councilman, as a former mayor, and certainly as a member of the Cranston School Committee, also as a former teacher and a founding member of the CTA. I, I just like to emphasize to each and every one of you, uh, that press releases, Twitter and Facebook postings without prior and proper due diligence does not resolve issues of importance to the people of Cranston. <laughs> communication and a communication alone between the city council, the school committee and the mayor resolves problems and issues such as the one before us tonight. Apparently, once the mayor communicated, as Mr. Moretti said, with the school administration and the chairman of the school committee, uh, his concerns were clarified. And we are extremely happy tonight that the mayor now supports the teacher and the paraprofessional contracts. But they are fair contracts. They are equitable contracts. And most importantly, they are affordable contracts over the next three years within the school budget. Uh, several days ago, Mr. Balducci, school superintendent Janine Nada Massey, and I were summoned to the mayor's office prior to the school committee's ratification of the teachers' contracts. Uh, and in the presence of the mayor, Mr. Moretti, uh, detailed for us the multi-million dollar financial structural problem that the City Council is now facing. Uh, once D Director Moretti concluded his presentation, I asked the question, what would he like the school committee and the school administration to do? His response was short and to the point. He wanted us to be informed of their structural problem. And secondly, he made it quite clear that it's a strong possibility that the school department would be level funded in fiscal year 22, 23, and possibly 23, 24. Knowing that the school committee was certainly not, to, not going to ratify a teacher's contract that would place us in deficit situation in the second and third year of the school budget. Again, I emphasize to, you, to each of you that the contract before you was negotiated fairly and affordably for the duration of those contracts. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I realize that this is the silly season. It's the election season. I've been through them since 1979. So I urge all of us, all of us to act responsibly, especially when posting on Twitter or Facebook, et cetera. And let us all avoid making ridiculous remarks such as, such as the school department woefully mismanaged their appropriations over a decade. And secondly, that we rubber stamp all our contractual obligations. Those are irresponsible statements made on these, on these particular formats. Uh, members of the uh, board, I, I do appreciate the fact that you, you're all supporting the contract tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this should have never happened. This meeting should never have happened.
and it happened because of a lack of communication. Let's not let it happen in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to ask for. Okay. All right. I would like to ask the rest of the people that are on this list and the other school committee members. You are welcome to come up to the microphone. If you want to speak for one minute, 60 seconds, we're going to time you. You can come up, but I think we're ready to vote. So you got 60 seconds. Mr. Fusco, would you like to come up? Anybody on the school committee wants to come up, you got 60 seconds. And the vice chair is going to time you. Tell me when. Go. Dave Sears. Cranston School Committee Representative, Fifth Ward. Um, real quick then, I decided to get into this arena, uh, public service in 2011, here at this building, when the previous administration proposed a mayoral academy be built in the city of Cranston. Um, the army of people that showed up here, just like tonight, had their voices heard, and just like tonight. Fast forward to 2022, we're here again. The mayor has announced that he's now in favor of this contract. I don't want to give another history lesson, but it's in order. Um, one thing I've learned from growing up, my grandmother, God rest her soul, was a Cranston public school teacher for years, Jan Pillabosian. She, <clears throat> she was a teacher from the times of Methuselah. And I can tell you one thing that I know, you cannot pull the wool over a teacher's eyes. That is why this room is still packed here tonight after we've seen him go from does not support it to could support it to possibly supporting it, but not certain things to certain wage reopeners to one time wage reopeners. Time. I'm not finished. The chairman of the mayor's party has called us rubber stamps for the unions, has called us mismanagement and misappropriation time. funds. Time. I'm sorry. Time. Well, Let him go. Let I can go. tell you the sentiments are the same as you see from the anti-union right to work up. nonsense. I'll blow it out your ass, Chris. Oh. And let me tell you something else. No, no, no. no, no. Let me yeah, tell you please, something else. Please shut his microphone off. Please shut his microphone off. No, I'm good. I'm good. David, come on now. David. I'm... I'm I'm asking everyone, if you come up here, it's for 60 seconds. It, you, like I said, you think it's easy to run this meeting. Doing my best. Okay. Got that? Time out. Excuse me, Chairman. Oh, Chairman. I'm not at the podium. Can I ask everybody to please put your cell phones down? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have been Cranston resident. Can you please hold up for one second, please? I have a point oh, of information. Okay, your time. Your time. I have a point of information. If you see somebody out of phone, that's how we look up the contract and the documents. They're, they're emailed. And I technology. can't know that for sure. I'm just pointing that out. Uh, you know? Please, your listen, please. Your time. If I could have everyone's attention, please. May I have everyone's attention, please? There is no, you are not on your time right now. My name is You're not Diane. on your time right now. Please let me speak. There is no reason for anyone in this room to get hostile right now. No reason whatsoever. There is no reason for anyone to be yelling at anyone or telling us how to act. That is not called for, okay? I understand We're, we're that. doing our best here to do a good job, I've let people talk over. I've let people talk about things that are not on the agenda. So please, we do not want to be lectured. You have one minute to speak about the contract. Thank you. I have been a Cranston resident for 36 years. We have moved here. 
Joanne Spaziano, 20 Boxwood Avenue. We moved to Cranston 36 years ago because of the schools. I have been a Cranston teacher for 24 going on 25 years. I am starting my 29th year as a teacher. All three of my children have gone through the Cranston school system. All three of them are productive members of society and I have Cranston Public Schools to thank for that. I am a proud member of this union. I am a teacher at Parkview Middle School in sixth grade and I teach math. I am a dedicated teacher, which means that I get longevity because I've been doing this for so many years, which is part of what the contract covers. We are in this profession for the kids. We are the ones who wore the masks while the kids came to school. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of the contract. And I ask that you people, thank you for giving me the attention and thank you for supporting our contract. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to come up and speak? Okay, yes, we have someone else. I made a promise at the beginning of the meeting that if someone wanted to speak, I would let them speak. So I'm not gonna deny Janice anyone. Janice Ruggieri, 45 Overhill Road. Janice Ruggieri. I just wanted to say one thing and my comment is about social media. And if I was Mr. Riley's opponent, I'd be on social media pulling all of the comments that he made to show what he said prior to this meeting and what he Can said we stick tonight. To the contract, really please? Can we... And I would also like to remind everyone in this room that we are here tonight because of Mayor Hopkins, the endorsed candidate that the teachers union endorsed. He's not up for reelection now, and maybe he won't be in two years, but I hope that everyone remembers what he did. Why, he, why we are all here tonight. The decisions that his administration have made have put this city in the financial crisis that it is in now. The school department abided by the budget that was presented to them. And Mr. Riley's immediate response to the financial crisis was to ask for the million damn, dollars back. It's contract, Come on now. contract. Please stick to the contract. It is a contract. Thank you. The money that was given to the school department once again, is in balance with the with the contracts that they provided, and I just wanted to thank everyone here who now is saying that they are supporting these contracts. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, let me get an order here. May I have a motion? Motion, motion to approve. To approve. Second. I have to uh, tell you what you're going to be voting on. There's two uh, ordinances in front of me here. Let's get this right. 622.01, ordinance ratifying school committee's collective bargaining agreement with the Cranston's Teachers Alliance HFT paraprofessionals. Do I have a motion to, motion approve? to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Rose, any discussion? <laughs> Rose, please take a roll. Cosmo Marino? Yes. Cosmo Donegan? Yes. Cosmo Campapiano? Yes. Cosmo Riley? Yes. Cosmo Marinzulli? Yes. Cosmo Arthur Ferry? Yes. Cosmo Pepalos? Yes. Ordinance passes seven to nothing. I have another ordinance in front of me, 62202, ordinance ratifying the school committee's collective bargaining agreement with the Cranston Teachers Alliance Local 1704. Second. Any discussion? Yes, uh oh, Chris Popwalk, the gonna, president wants to speak. Real quick, it's logistically coming here is very difficult. I wanna thank Mr. Steve Scapitucci. If I mess your name up, I apologize. Shannon and Tom, it's not easy doing this. So I wanna thank Superintendent Mr. Crudell for making sure we could use uh, the auditorium and our city clerk, Rosalba, Rosalba Zanni, to getting all our information and everything here. Thank you, Rose. Give Rose a round of applause. We love you, Rose. That's all I got. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please take a vote. Councilman Marino? Yes. Councilman Donegan? Yes. Councilman Kipiano? Yes. Councilman Riley? Yes. Councilman Rizzoli? Yes. 
Council Vice President Ferry? Yes. Council President Pavlos? Yes. Ordinance is approved seven to nothing. I know things might have gotten a little heated here and there, but overall, this was a pretty good day. We're going to take a break so we can go on to the other boring stuff on our docket. We're going to take a five-minute recess, and if you, if you don't have to stay for...
Shannon. We got to tell Tom to uh, look into these microphones. Steve, don't be surprised if these microphones disappear and the other ones reappear. <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to uh, bring the meeting back to order. Okay, now, um, Chris is going to help me out here now because we want, we want to take things a little bit out of order, you said, right? So can I have a motion to take the docket out of order? So move, second. Rose, uh, Rose, please take a roll. Any discussion? I'm sorry. Rose, please take a roll. Yes. Councilman Donegan? Yes. Councilman Capapiano? Yes. Councilman Riley? Councilman Renzulli? Yes. Councilman Vice President Ferry? Yes. Councilman President Papalosis? Yes. Okay, at this time we're going to do the executive session um, so Mr. Perillo can leave at, when we're done. So uh, where are we going? I think uh, we're going to go to a classroom um, down, the hallway. down the hallway. And we're going to just make it really quick. So I'll make a motion, Chair, to go into executive session pursuant to RIGL 4246582 a two collective bargaining and litigation for an update on uh, furloughs and retirements. Second. Rose, please take a roll. Councilman Marino? Yes. Councilman Donegan? Yes. Councilman Capipiano? Yes. Councilman Riley? Councilman Renzulli? Yes. Councilman Vice President Ferry? Yes. Councilman President Pepelos? Yes. Okay. We are moving into executive session.
May I have a motion to seal the minutes of the executive session and be noted that we did not take any votes? No Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So done. Okay, let's see where we stand now. Okay, we have um, next. The resolution, right? The resolution urging the council and administration to use ARPA funds to repair, renovate, and fix the Budlong Pool, sponsored by Councilwoman Jermaine. Councilwoman Jermaine, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President, Vice President. Um, this resolution, we said this all is, uh, is a cry out from the resident. Uh, we know for the past decades, uh, resident in Quinson have this one time every year to enjoy the pool, Budlong pool. And for the past two years, as you know, it was closed due to COVID. And that was the question. And we know we're not going into the detail, but I think as the resident, a lot of complaints, a lot of emails, and also in the last survey that the administration conducted, uh, there were a lot of um, a percentage of the results says that you can use the upper money. We know we have uh, $42.8 million to use, and that is not something we have every time. It's one a lifetime. So I know there are a lot of um, recommendation on how to use upper money, and using for Bud Longpool is one of the recommendations. So that's why I think for the benefit of the people, we know how hard it is. We just leave this <laughs> auditorium, go to a woman, we all like, oh, his heart. And we know how a lot of children in our city do not, a lot of families do not have the luxuries to go to um, private beaches or to have a pool in their backyard. So, and we know also for the past two years, a lot of children stay home using computers, you know, and they lost the social uh, uh, wave of their peers. So the pool is not only to uh, allow, uh, you know, people to cool off, it's a place also to help uh, socialize, to get the children out of their home and play, have a good year. So uh, that's why I think uh, we have to start somewhere, even though we do not know yet what the, uh, after the result of the survey, uh, we don't know what is being in place yet, but I think we should start somewhere and that's why I request if we can use upper money to really uh, renovate or you know the facilities for the benefit of the resident of Queenstown, particularly Ward Two. Um, I I'm not in the committee, so I know it's a hard ask, um, but I think when we see the demographic of what to all the people who mostly will be using the poll, we need to take a step back to think. So it should be a priority because the demographic has changed over the years. Is it why it's been, I don't know, neglected or not? That's a question. Or is it why we lost the interest in doing something, I don't know. But I think it's up to all of us to make sure we serve those who are in need. And some may not agree with us because they don't understand why in whatever we do right now, we need to see the equity lens because inequality exists. And there is a reason inequality exists. And the only way we can bridge the gap of inequality is see the lens of equity. 
So that's why I'm asking you tonight. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask if there's anyone in attendance, either here in chambers or on Zoom that would like to have any public comment on this matter. I need to reopen public hearings. No one, no one on Zoom, no one here. Okay, I would like to close public hearings on this matter at this time. A council discussion, uh, Councilman Donegan. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Councilman Donegan. Thank you. Um, I just, I'd like to say uh, thank you to Councilwoman uh, Germain for um, bringing this before us this evening. Uh, prior statistics show that Rhode Island is one of, if not the fastest warming um, states on the continental United continental US. Um, so with increasing temperatures in the summer, it's critically important that we offer uh, and take measures to offer residents places to cool off with rising temperatures. Um, there are many ways that we can do that systematically throughout the city, um, but offering a place like a pool or a splash pad um, is certainly probably the best and most fun way to do it. But also um, the community that it serves is one that as Councilwoman Germain said, for you know economic or transportation reasons or many others, um, they might not have the same equitable access to those spaces to cool off in the summer. They probably don't have a plot that has uh, a pool or the means to get uh, to purchase a pool or what have you not. So I think it's this is uh, this is an equity issue. Um, and uh, I think that uh, we should move this forward to the full council. Councilwoman Renzulli. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Councilwoman Jermaine for bringing this forward. We've had several conversations on the topic um, and with constituents as well. I do have a question for Auditor DeMeo. If we use ARPA funds for this project, would we need to open it and I'm not saying I have a problem with this, but it's just a question to open it up for use for anyone. I know that a few years ago, it, because there were some kind of fights there, it became closed to just be for Cranston residents only. But when we use federal funding to reopen it, does that change that at all? Based on my research and the seminar I took, um, I do not believe you have to change any of the requirements you currently have. Okay, thank you. Um, so... I think this will be a big project. You know, outside of this, there should probably be some kind of committee or board to help recreation do this. I know that just from doing my own research, several of most of the pools built in this era from the WPA money um, are now either closed or have been totally modernized. They're smaller. This pool is huge. Without an aquatics director, it'd be difficult to manage this properly. That's a conversation for another day, but I would like Councilwoman's permission to be added to this resolution and I wholeheartedly support it passing tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, of course, everybody is, that's a community work. It's not me. I bring it up. It's all of us. I know we all are working for our residents and want the best for them. So it's all of, it's open to all of you. And oh, Council President Papalaskis. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman, for bringing this forward. Um, you know, I'm in full support of it. Just had a legal question. I don't know if it should be going to Solicitor Malay or even to our budget analyst. If this resolution passes tonight, it doesn't obligate us to spend any money today. We would still have to do planning, have the administration on board, you know, go all through the proper channels to spend opera money. We're not voting tonight specifically to spend it, but it's the will of the council to fix the pool. Is that from what I understand, it's just a suggestion on how to appropriate the money. I believe based on the ordinance you put in, the full council has to vote on how the money gets spent. Okay. I'm, a, I'm in full support of the councilman. I'd love to be a co-sponsor as well. And thank you for bringing this forward. Councilman Riley. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I too would like to be added as a co-sponsor. I think this is a necessary use of the opera funds. Uh, you know, every community is unique and different in its own way. And this is one of the ways that ours is unique. We have this pool, it's, um, it's been 
utilized, maybe underutilized in the past, I think we could really not only bring it back, but really make this a much uh, bigger destination for our residents. And if we wanted to open it up to outside, um, outside residents, we could do that as well, responsibly and, and make it more of an attraction for people. Because I do understand maybe the past 10 years, the traffic to it hasn't been what it was previously, but I think we can change that. It's a great addition to our city. Um, it's something that not, mostly no other cities have. And I think we really should be uh, putting this money like this to fix things that we normally couldn't through our budget. I and mean, it's just too expensive. And to, to maintain it, I think we can we can figure out a way to do that going forward as well. I think it's something that, you know, city government isn't just a business. You know, we, we do have to look at the finances. And I know I I do that a, a lot. And I try to put that above emotional decisions. But I think here, this is something that really goes to the heart of our city. And I fully support uh, the use of the funds for that. Thank you. Councilwoman Marino. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Germain, for bringing forth this resolution. Um, you, you know, I think we all know where I stand on the Budlong pool, um, and I believe it should be reopened. I and mean, I'm sad that it's not. Um, I do want to say, uh, with respect to this resolution, this is setting forth what our intentions are if this were to get approved as, as a body. Um, but we can't forget that we as a council have the ability to set forth an ordinance specifically appropriating the ARPA funds to this. So, um, but before we can do something like that, um, we need to know exactly what it's going to cost to get right. this pool operational. Um, and unfortunately, the prior study that we have with respect to that pool, as you, as you know, if we've discussed before, doesn't answer that question. Um, whether it's a public pool or private pool, you need a pool expert to tell you what needs to be done to actually repair it and then what that cost is going to be. The same thing with the pump station relative to the pool. And then separate and apart from that, you need an expert with respect to the building. Once we get that dollar amount, then I would love to see this rock and roll and happen. And, and I'm sure I'm not alone. Thanks. Uh, through the chair. Yes. Uh, just clarification along the means of what um, Councilman Marino said. Remember, we have to appropriate the funds by December 31st of 2024. We have to expend the funds by December 31st of 2026. So if the project is large in the environment we're in, we'd have to figure out a timeline so we meet those requirements. Thank you. Um, may I? You wanted to go, right? I, I she had a hand up first. I just wanted to either make a co it's half comment, half question with the opera funds. Is it correct to my understanding this does not need to to go through planning and the, the capital budget process, correct? Because it's separate from that. We're not putting it in the capital budget because we're spending our funds. It's I'd have to defer to council on that. I would have to check the legal guidelines based on what was how the, uh, the ARPA money came in through the federal government. I would have to do some research on that question. Okay, because I think that that's just an important it's very relevant because if we have to wait for this to go through the capital budget and vote on it, then we literally can't start until next summer and then we're without a pool for a longer period if this is going to keep going and be a continual problem so if someone could get those answers or councilman marino might know um that's just important yeah to, to that point uh councilman Renzulli is um depends on the extent of the repairs. And that's why the study that was done doesn't really answer the question as to what is the true extent of the repairs necessary to the pool. Depending on what the extent of the repairs is, depends on whether or not we've got to go through that formal process, my understanding. Oh, can I add to that? So this, the resolution purpose is got to start somewhere. So all those details gonna come after. How it goes, I think, if we want to do it together, we can have a committee and we what we want to do, what we want to see, and that's where we will have to, I'm not talking about any price here. There is no cost in this one, it's have the idea we, we need to commit if we want to do it. That's the only the first step we are here right now. Councilman Campopiano. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first, I wanna thank uh, Councilwoman Denise for uh, putting this forward, I would like to add to it. Uh, be added to the uh, resolution, but um, 
I also, we need to have some type of a number because we don't know if we're demolishing the pool, fixing the pool. I mean, to Councilwoman Jessica's point, um, we, we don't know where this is going. Um, we have to, uh, I mean, we might get to the point where all the opera funds are gone and it wouldn't do us any good because we didn't put that amount aside. So um, we have to do due diligence in order to get this thing rolling. And I may add that I visited my son for the last time in New York City and all the playgrounds in New York City have a water feature, every one of them. Um, I don't know if that's something that would be work in Cranston, but it's something they do have and it was, it was a beautiful thing. But um, thank you again, Anise, for putting this forward. Councilman Marino. Thank you. I omitted the most important part. I would like to be added as a co-sponsor. Thank you. Everybody. I, I think this should be, everybody should be added as a co-sponsor. Do you, are you okay with that, Councilwoman? That I sent an email to Wolves and asked everybody. I don't know if she sent it. I, I sent an email and said, send it to everybody if they want to be a yeah. co-sponsor. Because we cannot do it because of, you know, open acne, right? Yes. So I asked that, yeah. So I would love to see it's a you know, collective effort to do it for Cranston. And thank you for bringing this forward and the conversation has to start somewhere. So yeah. this is a good start. We have to stay with it though. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Vargas. So for the record, I like to be added for the, as a co-sponsor just in case uh, Rosala didn't get that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so uh, I would like to end the discussion right now and um, please take a vote. Councilman Marino? Yes. Councilman Donegan? Yes. Councilman Campagnano? Yes. Councilman Riley? Yes. Councilman Rizzoli? Yes. Councilman Rizzoli? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Councilman President Papas? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, next we have real estate tax abatements. Um, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Second. Rose, please take a roll. Councilman Marino? Yes. Councilman Donegan? Yes. Councilman Campagnano? Yes. Councilman Riley? Yes. Councilman Renzulli? Yes. Councilman Vice President Ferry? Yes. Councilman President Capos? Yes. Next. Chairman? I'm sorry. Excuse me, may I? Today is my 13 year anniversary, wedding anniversary, and I asked my husband, I have to be here today. I cannot miss it. <laughs> So, you have our permission to go home. Can I have the permission to go home? <laughs> Leave now. Happy anniversary. <laughs> happy you. anniversary. I, I want to say happy anniversary to my husband. To <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I'm coming home now. <laughs> okay, next we have motor vehicle tax abatements. Did I already say that? Do I have a motion to approve? Any discussion? Rose, please take a roll. Councilman Marino? Yes. Councilman Donegan? Yes. Councilman Campicano? Yes. Councilman Riley? Yes. Councilman Rizzoli? Yes. Councilman Vice President Ferry? Yes. Councilman President Kepalos? Yes. Next, um, for informational purposes only, and if does anyone have any discussion on tax assessment, border review assessed December 31st, 2020? Any discussion? No? Okay, we'll move on to tax interest waiver approvals. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Close. Any discussion? We have discussion. Yeah. Councilwoman Manzuli. Thank you. Um, for Mr. Igo, I guess, here as a finance director, I just have a question on one of these. Um, the first one, Capaldi Properties LLC, it's the reason says lost check slash best interest. I'm just wondering if I could have a little bit of explanation on why we are waiving the interest for a lost check. The, the taxpayer is claiming that they mailed the check in a timely fashion and the city did not receive it. So they are asking us to, to forgive the interest on the late fee. Does that happen often? Occasionally. I mean, the mail has been getting worse and worse as, as time goes on. Okay. Do we keep a record if, if it's like a repeat offender? Yes, I do. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Rose, could you please take a vote? 
Council Marino? Yes. Councilman Downigan? Yes. Councilman Capitano? Yes. Councilman Riley? Yes. Councilman Renzulli? Yes. Council Vice President Ferry? Yes. Council President Kaplos? Yes. Okay, next we have three council communications that we are going to continue or may be, some may be removed, but we're going to continue those to the to the next meeting. Everyone has agreed to that. And I don't see anything else on the agenda. May I please have a motion to adjourn? Oh, I'm sorry, Rose. Continue all three. And if we don't want to take any of them off, we'll let you know. Please. Thank you. Let, let Rose finish. Motion to adjourn. Oh, uh, one, one more thing. I'm sorry. Steve, thank you very much tonight. You did an excellent job. <laughs> you know, and I tell you, these microphones might disappear. Shannon, thanks for filling in tonight. We appreciate it. And thank our three people in the, um, in the auditorium here for sticking it out for the whole time. May I have a motion to adjourn, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.